it essentially let us see up to three years in the past, like what happened on a, on a server when people were logging, when you know, individuals or even threat actors were like logging onto it. Hi, welcome to Unallocated Space by ArcPoint Forensics. This is a monthly podcast where we interview digital forensic experts on different challenges, their passions, and how they got started in the industry. I'm the host, Amy Moles, CEO and co-founder of ArcPoint Forensics, and I'm joined by Brian Moran. Hello. Uh, yes, yeah, so uh, it's it's great to be here on a uh, on a beautiful sort of spring day, I guess, as there's nothing but clouds outside here. But you know, hey, at least at least it's starting to warm up a little bit. Uh, I am um, Brian Moran. I currently live in Baltimore. Uh, a little bit about me. Uh, I got in the wrong line back in 1998, returning your video and accidentally joined the Air Force. Uh, was in there for about 12 years or so. Uh, during that time, I had two all expense paid vacations to Iraq. Uh, the first time was up in Mosul for six months. Uh, the second time was at, at, at Baghdad in support of VCing operations for a year. And that second deployment uh, kind of got my introduction to the overall digital forensics realm. Uh, kind of a, an interesting story for those of you who don't know, uh, my start actually was entirely because of I played a video game. So we're, uh, we're in, in Norfolk, uh, in Norfolk, uh, Norfolk Naval Station, not a Naval Air Station, I think it is. And we're getting ready to get on a plane that was pretty sure like built in like the 40s, maybe the 50s. I mean, it still had the little cigarette thing, the, the cigarette uh, ashtrays in the seats, like <laughs> that old. But um, um, we're getting ready to get on the plane. And I was playing golf on my uh, Tiger Woods golf on my laptop with an Xbox 360 controller, which anybody who knows that's just a regular USB port, like it's nothing special or anything like that. And somebody saw that in our squadron and then I got passed up and then we get over there and they're like, Oh, we need somebody to do this thing called, called computer forensics. Well, it's like, well, well, Brian can do it because he knows all about computers. So like literally like I had no <laughs> idea what I was supposed to do. I had no idea anything. I just like, like, cool. Like I literally got my start playing a video game. So like for all of you kids out there, like you can absolutely get ahead in life by playing video games. I promise. Like I am living proof of that. But uh, um, fortunately had, uh, had uh, after about, a month or so of just kind of like figuring out like what was kind of important like pictures stuff like that i uh, had two contractors who were part of the the army Ar army docx contract uh they were all from i believe mantec at the time and uh the two of them who came to our our base which were uh, jason and eric were absolutely phenomenal and you know, i, I kind of just latched on to them and tried to learn everything that i could uh, over the course of of, of that of, of you know the rest of that deployment when I got back to the States, back to San Antonio, uh, I got really, really lucky that they were actually just spinning up a brand new organization within where I work. And they actually just kind of let me go and do my own thing. So like I was the only person in the military doing that specific thing for that organization, which was which was super awesome. And then like I just continued to do that. And then unfortunately with the military at the time, which is it's getting a little bit better now, but it's still very similar. Like I had to make a choice. Like, do I want to be good at the military or do I want to be good at my job? And I chose my job just because I, I mean, I, I took great pride in that. Like I kind of felt like I could do the military stuff as much as I wanted to, but like, it just, it wasn't for me. Like I really wanted to do a really, really good job, you know, at, at my actual job. Like I wanted to learn everything that I could, like, like, I would buy iPhones and buy Blackberries at the time. I'm, I'm dating myself here, but actual Blackberries <laughs> at the time, like buy them off eBay and just go through and see what kind of stuff I could pull off of them and everything like that. So I uh, kind of finished up my tour there, uh, got out of the military. I worked for a company here in Baltimore for about seven months or so. They got merged to another company, wasn't happy with the way that that worked out, went to another company here for a year then went to a third consulting company, which is actually based out of Kansas for about six months, which was the worst six months of my life. Like I traveled so much, I, I just hated it. And like, it's always been my dream to like actually like start my own consulting firm, which which is just me. Like, I don't want it ever more than that. Like, I don't want an actual like business or employees or anything like that. Like, I just want to be able to take care of myself and that's it. Because honestly, that's enough hassle as it is taking care of yourself. <laughs> but uh, uh, so I started that back in 20, I think it was 24. 2013 or 2014, I actually like filed the paperwork on LegalZoom on a flight back from Las Vegas. 
and then you know put in my resignation a few weeks later and i've been doing my own thing since so it's it's really interesting with the background you know like exposure to all of the different things that i had because i, I haven't i had the military side obviously you know prep previously working at, at, at National Security Agency, like I have the the overall intelligence side, both from like a strategic and tactical standpoint. And then I also have the intrusion side of also NSA, but also the commercial side. So like, I mean, I think there's prob probably like every case possible, like I've had some involvement in, you know, doing everything from, from credit card fraud to nation state to, to IOT devices, like, I've been really, really lucky and really, really fortunate. And you know, part of the part of it, I think, also comes from the fact that like most of the people in our career field, I think, are fairly introverted, and I am very much mm -hmm. extroverted, <laughs> which helps a lot with the networking aspect. So, like, anytime that some, something comes up, like a prime example of that is the uh, the Amazon stuff that I did with Jessica Hyde when we initially like started breaking down the Echo and stuff. Like we found we found a pretty big security issue that like we felt had to be addressed and had to be addressed responsibly. So I didn't know anybody at the time who was working in Amazon. And we just reached out on Twitter. It's like, hey, you know, does anybody know anybody at Amazon? And within like five minutes, like there were people actually like, okay, like what do you need? So it's it's really really cool, you know, the way the community comes together and stuff. But also like it's just like you know. It, you also have to like like take a step back every once in a while and just be like not necessarily imposter syndrome but just like you know like it's very humbling to look at all the stuff that i've had and experienced and people that i've talked to and everything like and it's just yeah our, our career field is really a fantastic community like i'm i'm so grateful to be part of it and I, I always try my best to like just extend everything as much as possible because like we all got here with help like none of us like com were completely self-made like everybody had mentors and people looking out for each other and like i i try to do the same thing because i you know i know that i am incredibly fortunate to be in the position that i am and I'm, I am by no means the smartest person. There are many people who are much smarter than me. And, you know, the next generation of people are coming up and like, you know, they're going to replace all of us because they are so far superior than what we're able to do. Yeah, absolutely. So you had mentioned imposter syndrome. Is that something that you had struggled with? Because I know I, personally for me, I struggle with it. Um, uh, it takes I, a long time to get over it. Yeah, I, I I wouldn't say it's it's a struggle. And, and, and I... I'm not a huge fan of the the term imposter syndrome because like it's it has this negative connotation to it where it like for me imposter syndrome is just like like okay like you know you're not the smartest you are not the best but like but that's okay because you are the smartest and best in other things in other areas you just have to be able to recognize what your strengths are you have to recognize what your weaknesses are and you have to be able to communicate that and also like just be cognizant of that and and the one thing you never want to do is try to portray yourself as, oh, I know all of this stuff. And then you're like, Absolutely. And then you're like oh, no, actually, I have no idea what any of this stuff is. <laughs> but yeah, yeah number it, one rule, don't pretend that you yeah, know something. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah. It, it, and, and there's nothing wrong with Googling it. There's nothing wrong because, you know, again, like there are so many different aspects of so many different things. And, and even even within our field, like even even within a subset of the field, like like cell phones, for example, like like. Some people are fantastic with iOS devices. Some people are fantastic with Android devices. The, the three people in the world who use Nokia devices, like some people are fantastic with those. Like it just, <laughs> it, it's, it's just, you know, everybody has has their own specialties and backgrounds and experiences, and that helps get them to where they are. So, you know, like together as a community, as a team, like we can absolutely continue to move forward. Yes, absolutely. So within the DOD space, like you've worked in DOD, worked in military, um, do you feel as you go through your consulting services and stuff like that into the commercial space, is there an advantage of having that experience? Do you see things from a different light than most people would see it? Uh, I, I think so. And and like part of this is also bias based like heavily off of a case that I worked for for 10 months, pretty much all, all of last year, which which was a very large international international incident nation state hacking thing. Like I'm not going to actually say the name of it, but like maybe if with a couple of drinks, like I, I, I might tell you <laughs> more about it. But yeah, it's uh, it was really interesting working in that case because we actually worked, uh, it wasn't just like like the company that I worked with, like there were several entities involved with it. And, and like the biggest thing from that is like, I actually have had the experience of working 
cases specifically like that from the other side from when I when I you know when I was within the intelligence community so like I know the things that we would typically try to do and work through in the process of actually like like getting set up to actually like conduct some sort of intelligence operation and that's exactly kind of how we played that that particular investigation was approaching it from that standpoint rather than then approaching it from like a traditional like like incident where where there was a breach, you know, there was loss of data, everything like that. Like it was obviously like very long, it was a very long process. It was very long planned out, you know, and it was like incrementally done step by step by step. And I think, you know, having the ability to recognize that, that not every case is just, you know, a, a random 11 year old kid from Romania, like hacking into something. Like sometimes it's like legit, you know, like legit, like multi, multi-month, even multi-year operations that, that are just, you know, set the groundwork and be planned and just, you know, then go after the things that they want to go after. So like, you know, having the ability to just take a complete step back and be like, yes, this sucks that that this happened and this happened and this happened, like all of that sucks. Like we have to go all the way back to the beginning and figure out the steps that they went through to actually get to this point. And then once we figure out how they got to that point, like we have to make sure that there are things in place to mitigate that from ever happening again. So it's, it's, it's really interesting because, you know, of course, you know, the, the, the credit card breaches, you know, even the ransomware cases, stuff like that. Like, for the most part, they're fairly straightforward. It's all usually crime related. You know, it's it's getting data, trying to get money and stuff like that. But like, the actual nation state operations that are truly like like working on kind of anything with intelligence gain, intelligence value, stuff like that. Like, those are the cases that I love the most because it's just, you know, I, I picture it almost like playing chess against an adversary. Except you don't know who you're playing. You just like, okay, like let's see what's going to happen here. And they're like, oh, like every once in a while, like. Ooh, very well done. Like that was kudos to you, good sir. <laughs> oh my gosh. Well, that sounds really intimidating though, when first starting out. Like I'm sure now that you're well versed in it um and have so much experience, you know, in those type of casework. But like starting out, how did you kind of it has to be intimidating to not know who's on the other side of that? Uh I I don't think I, I don't think I ever really looked at it from the point of intimidation. Uh, I always looked at it as the point of a challenge. So like, I've always been, I always been a person who like my drive isn't to necessarily exceed at something. My drive is like when something says that, oh, this can't be done or, or, you, or you can't do this, or this is hard, then that's what's like, oh, I'm going to, I'm going to actually get this done. I'm going to do everything that I can to make sure that this happens. So like, I, I think that from my perspective, like I always looked at everything like a challenge and, you know, it goes back to, I think honestly, you know, it comes back to the mindset a little bit with like the video game start, like, like, like the, part of the reason I love video games was the sports video games, obviously, because it's, it's fun to do that and be like, yeah, like, it'd be really cool if I was really this good at golf or something like that. But, you know, it's also like, you know, like the, the games where you know then involve like the different puzzles and you know trying to like fill, figure out different things within different levels and everything like that like all of that like puzzle solving piece like that's that's i mean at the, at the end of the day that's what we do we take ver various pieces and we put them together and try to solve something and, and you know be that be that a a murder investigation be that be that fraud be that nation state hacking like that's what we're trying to do so like i think very much like just having that mindset of not necessarily not necessarily being overwhelmed and you know approaching something and being like oh this is huge it's just like being curious about it and then like okay like here's a piece here's a piece here's a piece and you work on trying to put them together and honestly like one of the things that i that i tell young examiners every day you know when when they ask you know specifically questions about like how they're going to start what they're going to do it's like like I don't care if you have the right answer. I don't care if you have the wrong answer. Like as long as you're able to show me the reason and how you got to that answer, like that's what I care about. Like I care about the problem solving process. I care about the ways and, and you know, it, it could be right. It could be wrong. But like as long as you just get to the point of actually like showing showing the reason why you came to the conclusion that you did, like that's really super important. And again, like it does matter. It, it, I, I, I should take that back with it doesn't matter if it's wrong, because sometimes it does matter if it's wrong. But then that's where like the peer review piece, you know, the the, the networking community keeps, piece absolutely comes in. But like, again, it's just going through that process, I think, is the biggest part. Do you have a peer review process that you like? Uh, typically, typically depending on what it is and depending on, uh, depending on the investigation and any kind of NDA or anything that I'm signed to, like, I will try to bounce it off certain people if I can, 
but I'm not always able to do that. And then at that point, like it's usually people within whatever, whatever company that I'm contracting to at that specific time. But like when I actually am like running a case completely by myself and, you know, everything like that, like there are like, if there's a specific, specific type of case, like if there's a specific operating system or specific device or something like that, like I will try to go to certain people and be like, Hey, here's my, here are my findings. Here's the data. Like, what do you think of this? Yeah, I think it's really important to always have someone peer review your work, and no matter what what expert level you're at, right? Yeah. Um, just starting out, or if you've been doing it for 30 plus years, I think it's important because you're seeing it from a very specific lens, and then bringing somebody else in, they just have a totally different perspective. Yeah, yeah. and that 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 applies to you know obviously the reports, but honestly, that even replies to stuff like emails. Like I usually have people read my <laughs> emails just before I send them. Like just it's like like. Am, am I coming off the wrong way? Like, cause you know, the, you always want to take the emotion out of it completely. Cause sometimes you're just like, Oh, I'm so angry. Like, like, how can you do something like this? You'd be like, I am so sorry that all these terrible things happen to you. Let me see how I can help. Yeah. 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 A lot of times I find myself, I'll write an email and then I'll walk away yep. <laughs> to, to get some emotional intelligence back and then refocus yep. <laughs> in on what I have to say. Um, definitely helps. It, not not sending emails in the moment is probably sometimes the best. Yeah, <laughs> so yeah. I think we all need to take a step back. <laughs> um, so you mentioned a project that you and Jessica Hyde had worked on. Is there any other interesting projects or research that you're doing right now? Uh, so right now, uh, um, uh, right now, which I've been doing for the past six, six, six eight months probably, is I've been trying to work on the open source, the, the live response collection, open source stuff that I put together, which you know is essentially a collection of tools that you, you can put on an external drive of some sort or even a network share and just run that against a computer and get a bunch of information from it. Like the whole reason that I created that was specifically to have like, like small and medium sized businesses who don't have, you know, a, a, a budget for security other than like, like, you know, the typical, like, oh, we, we bought McAfee or we bought Norton or something like that. Like that's the extent of it. So it's to help them collect information that hopefully then can be passed on to an examiner to help them get answers. And I've been, I, I've been trying to work on it and, and <laughs> admittedly, like I haven't been able to devote as much time as I would like to do that. But like, that is that is my current currently my plan. Like I'm hoping to have that out hopefully by by the summer. Like I've kind of given myself a June first deadline, but like everything else, like I I mean th this past you know ob obviously we're still in a pandemic, but like the past two years have just been crazy with all of the different things that's happened and and all of the, all of the vulnerabilities, all of the all, all of the actual like like hacks and and everything that has happened like like we have been super busy for so long and like, it's kind of nice to sort of just relax for a little bit. And then like, just as you start to relax, like, oh, like six more things pop up. Like, okay, and now I have to figure out which one of those I'm gonna do. So like, you know, anything that's actually on the side, it's like, oh, here's a, here's a little hobby or project or hobby of mine. Like it keeps getting pushed to the side. So like, that's that's kind of unfortunate. But the the one thing that I am super proud of and, and super happy that we did is the, the, the 10 month engagement that we worked. Uh, we actually put together a tool called K Strike, which went through the UAL logs, or the, the UAL uh, data for, that Microsoft recorded on on server, which actually showed like uh, logons with users and IP addresses and stuff like that. So like it it essentially let us see up to three years in the past, like what happened on a, on a server when people were logging, when individuals or even threat actors were like logging onto it and stuff like that. So like. Working through that was, was absolutely amazing, and it was completely like I think I, I think we we discovered it in the middle of or in the, like towards the end of Ju or end of January. Uh, another company that we were working with apparently had found it like a few weeks or uh, I'm sorry, a few months earlier than that, but didn't disclose the findings of exactly what it was. So like we didn't we we really didn't know we just like hey here's this data like let's try to let's try to figure it out let's try to figure out these structures let's go through all this stuff and within I want to say within two weeks like we actually had like a proof of concept working script and we actually published that because like you know that's a huge artifact especially especially on systems these days when you have event logs that roll over in six minutes it's like boy it's really nice to look back three years and find out like who's been logging on to the system <laughs> it's, it's super helpful. yeah it really gives you like a holistic picture yep. that's awesome yep 
So is that something that you're providing to the community to use on open door? Oh, yeah, yeah, that that that's out uh, somewhere around here. I have <laughs> strike stickers. I don't know. I, I'll I'll be in Nashville starting. Uh, what what am I flying there? I think Friday night. Yeah, fr Friday night. So yeah, I'll be there for the Magnet Summit. So yeah, I'll I'll have I'll have my awesome new company stickers as well as the K strike stickers. So if anybody wants them, you know, come and find me. All right, great. Yeah, we'll have to uh, pop in the resource for people listening where yeah. they can find it and stuff like that. Perfect. Um, so we'll be sure to include that. Um, so I guess like when you're first starting out creating like some of these specialized projects and stuff like that, what advice can you give to young professionals who are intimidated or maybe overwhelmed and don't know where to start of how to give back to the community? Uh, honestly, like it just start somewhere. Like, 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 obviously, like, like, try to do, try to do searches. Like, like, if you find something that you think is interesting, or, or even, even, like, like, you know, a, a prime example. And there's, there's so many. I mean, there's so many mobile applications, and all of the mobile applications are sort of similar, but they're obviously, you know, each one of them is different. But like, you know, just start with that. Like, if you have a favorite app that you use on your phone, like, go through that. Like, go through the data. Like, see what data is actually there. Like, like see if you can, like, if it's a chat application, like, see if you can rebuild, like, the, the chat histories. See if you can rebuild the contacts. You know, just, just anything, and anything like that. Like, it's, it, 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 there is, again, there's not really a wrong answer. It's just, like, like, you just have to start somewhere. And then, like, as you work through it, like, maybe you decide, like, oh, well, I don't really like this mobile stuff. Like, I like, I like, network-based stuff, or, or maybe I like memory, or or maybe I like actual, you know, Windows endpoint, maybe I like Mac endpoint, maybe I maybe I love taking apart Linux, like, may, maybe I love going through the data on a Raspberry Pi, like, like, you know, you don't know until you actually, like, experience it, so, like, like, I would very recommend, like, the one thing I would say is, like, don't just be narrowly focused, don't just focus on, like, Windows systems, or, or, or uh, you know, server 2019 or anything like that. Like try to get as much exposure to as many things as possible and try to find something that actually interests you because if it interests you, you're gonna actually stick with it and you're gonna actually try to like, like in, in, in my opinion, you're actually gonna try to like make a difference and like make an impact be, um, because number one, if you're interested in it, which means you're probably gonna be proud of the work that you do. And if you are actually like those things together, like, I mean, that's how most of us got started and just poking around and doing curiosity things. Yeah, absolutely. And I think what you had met, you touched on before is like setting a deadline for certain work that needs to be done. You yeah. set a deadline for yourself and you at least prioritize of when and hold yourself accountable of when you're going to get that stuff. Um, that project re like research completed or that blog, you know, the first draft of it, whatever it is um, mm -hmm. to really move yourself forward so you can continue on. Where would people share their information? Do you think that they should share it on different forums or create their own website? Uh, so I think I, I, I think kind of we've migrated a little bit to like where where the sharing happens. So so I mean I would all, I would always say Twitter like like Twitter is I think by far like one of the best spots for our community. I know the the DFIR Discord is is another spot that is very much utilized. But honestly, like, just like start your own GitHub repository, like, you know, just start your GitHub and, and come up with a clever name or don't come up with a clever name, like, like whatever it is like, like that, cause that's probably going to stick with you for a while. So like, like at least, you know, you don't, you don't want to be like, like you owe three, nine, six, four, six, you know, you want something that's actually <laughs> hopefully kind of unique and actually like, you know, unique to yourself, but like just start stuff and like if you just write a couple of scripts to like go through and you know like parse out a SQLite database or or go through event log and like pull out like certain like event IDs anything like that like like I guarantee if you find if you think that there's a reason for you to actually write that script like somebody else will also find that useful at one point or another I guarantee that yeah, I find a lot of times too is when I talk to young professionals and they're not fully, uh, you know, comfortable with their skill set and stuff yet. Um, I'll tell them to find somebody that they really find inspiring and just redo the work that they did, yep. and then document the steps that way to just practice the individual steps, the individual documentation, um, and then get comfortable with how to write a technical blog. Because I think a lot of individuals too is like you're writing reports all day long. <laughs> writing a technical blog is very different from writing a report. Yep. Um, I mean, you're documenting the steps the same way, but it, you're talking to like a larger audience and um, it just can be a little bit overwhelming, I think. Yeah. yeah. 
Yeah, and I, I the one thing that I've I've come to realize through through my career on the on the IR side too is that like so you have to be able to write a couple of different ways. Like you have to be able to write like super detailed, in depth technical, but you also have to be able to like communicate all of your findings and the and talk in a way that is understood by like 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 a kindergarten or first grade level because like you know there are going to be plenty of people who are in positions to to make decisions with regards to money you know out allocate resources all of that and you know they may not understand any of the technical stuff that you do like they might just be like oh yeah like they just come in and do some magic and like stuff works like <laughs> so you have to be able to explain to them like why it's important and you know if if you want to use the magic analogy with them if they understand that like that's fine like you just have to figure out ways to actually like communicate and get the ideas across that it's understandable but also like it has to be understandable but it also can't be wrong yeah, absolutely. And I think that's important when you're also explaining to, you know, family members of what you do for a living. Yeah. If you can explain it to your grandma of yeah. how to do digital forensics, then I think <laughs> you can explain it to pretty much anybody yeah. at that point. Um, so you had mentioned you have mentors. Uh, can you kind of dive into that a little bit of how beneficial that's been for you and why you decided to seek a mentor? Yeah. So, so I think, uh, you know, like, again, like I, none of us got to where we are today with by ourselves like like that just it didn't happen like like everybody had somebody who you know they reached out to or or helped them along or you know like when they were in in, in a tough spot like could reach out and and just, just talk to you know be that technical things or even personal things like everybody has some sort of support structure and typically there is a professional support structure and a personal support structure you know and and sometimes they mix and you know there's nothing wrong with that but it's just a matter of you know you you everybody needs that especially again over the past two years like like none of us got through any any of this all by ourselves like there's just it's it's just not possible so like you know you know just reaching out to people who who you think not, not even not even like necessarily want to know more information from or anything like that like if you just like come across something and like like oh like uh um like let's say like, like let's say let's say heather Mollick, like Oh, like, you know, she did some awesome stuff with the mobile device. Like, just reach out to her and just say, you know, like, like, thank you. Like, I, I found this, you know, in article or or this presentation you did or something like that. Like, I found that super interesting. Like, just little things like that are are huge because you know we we divide we devote our time and resources obviously to to doing the stuff that we get paid to do. But we also try. You know, a lot of us try. Actually, I think almost all of us try to like give back to the community. So when when you give back and you actually get like feedback, like oh my gosh, I love feedback. It's even if it's bad feedback, I don't care. <laughs> like I just want to know, like oh, this was super helpful, or oh, this thing sucked. It's like okay, well, why did it suck? And then you you go through the steps on that and you try to make it better. And if it's super helpful, like that's just like like cool. Like I mean, there was I, I think it was just a few weeks ago where somebody somebody found I think my RDP our RD pieces Perl script from the, the RDP reconstruction or the RDP bitmap reconstruction. And they just like, they posted it on Twitter. Like, oh, you know, this thing was super helpful. Like it helped me get these answers. It's like, that's awesome. Like, that's why I did it because I knew that that was super important. Like it's not necessarily, you know, perfect. It's, it's admittedly, it's never going to be perfect until we figure out, you know, all of the stuff about that. But like, if it helps, if it helped me get an answer, I guarantee it will help somebody else get an answer. And that's, you know, goes back to like, like you know the research projects and everything like that like if you, if something that interests you if it's something that you think is cool like like just do it and just put it out there and then again like somebody's going to use it eventually i guarantee that yeah so i actually went through this uh i had a mentor um when i was at the national media exploitation center and it was when the surface surface book just came out and i don't know if anyone has ever imaged a surface book but it's not an enjoyable process especially when they first came out, it was just a headache. Mm -hmm. So I went through and I was able to acquire it, um, but it took forever. And the, someone asked me how to do it. And I didn't have the time to meet with them just because their schedules didn't line up. So I wrote a technical blog of how to do this without actually knowing that I did that um, and gave it to a person. And probably like three years later, someone's like, hey, I didn't know that you wrote these blogs. Where, where can I find the other ones? And I was like, I didn't write a blog. That was just something that I had documented, but I'm glad that people are finding it helpful still and yeah. useful. So it's kind of funny how all that stuff like comes back around. It's a nice, nice circle of life of mentorship and helping, helping out the community. Yeah. 
Yeah. And, you know, it, and, and that's, that's one of the things too, like, like you don't necessarily have to be an, an official mentor or a mentee or anything like that. Like, like, like for them, for, again, for the most part, like most of us are when, when we have free time, which we don't always have free time, but when we do like, like, like love reaching, you know, lo- like, 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 like love talking to people, love interacting with people. And like, it's also like one of the things that I've always thought was, was just fascinating to me is everybody has a unique perspective on, on anything based off of their own life experiences. And, and you could say it's, it's a, a slight prejudice because of their, you know, their life experience and everything like that. But like somebody sees something and then somebody else sees that same thing, but sees that in a completely different way. Like that might be the little spur of being like, oh yeah, well, what if we did it this way? And that might actually solve the problem. And, you know, somebody who who's been doing this for 20 years can have the problem be presented by somebody who literally like just rolled out of school and be like, Oh yeah. Like, well, well, like, well, why do you do it that way? Well, I, I don't know. We've always done it that way. Well, why? Because that's stupid. Like, Oh, well, yeah, actually you're right. That is a really stupid way to do it. Like, let's do it some other way. So like, it's just, it's, it's incredible how you can come across the answers and, and, you know, like, and, it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter if you're brand new. It doesn't matter if you're relatively new. It doesn't matter if you're a seasoned veteran. Like, like it, it, this is one of the very few career fields where like you can just find something and like just delve into it and like have answers. Whereas you know like like if you're if you're a reconstructive surgeon on elbows, like there's only so many ways you can rebuild that elbow. Like there's there's not really any way to do that. But like like oh I need all of the the you know all the van IDs from the security log. Like well okay there's like like six million different ways you can do that. So it's, it's up to you. Yeah. <laughs> Pick your poison Yep. <laughs> at that point. Um, so you've been a huge advocate in giving back even in the DFIR fit community as well, right? Yeah. So the, uh, um, so the, the whole DFIR fit thing started, oh boy, gosh, I, I want to say it was 2017. I, I want to say it was the summer of 2017. Okay, so this is pre-COVID. This is oh, not this a COVID pre, project. This is pre-COVID. Yeah, this this is this is pre-COVID. So, I believe I believe we were in Austin for the for the uh, for the D first summit, and I believe like right after the D first summit, uh, Stacy, who is forensics woman on Twitter, uh, started the D for fit hashtag just as like a kind of way to like be motivated and you know just like have accountability and stuff like that and. I mean, you know, we, we, we posted on that. We, we did stuff with it. We, we got shirts printed up, like, like all of that stuff kind of progressed to the point of in 2019 at the magnet summit, uh, we actually did like a, a fundraiser thing with, uh, with the T-Rex costumes and stuff like that. And we raised, I, I don't remember how much it was. It like 1200 bucks, maybe like we, we raised a decent amount of money for charity and like, Oh, like we can actually like keep doing this. Like, like we can have the fitness part of it, but with my actually like, raise raise money for charity too so then the following year which obviously was 2020 like we had all of these grand plans like we had medals printed up from for the magnets i'm like everything was amazing and then then this this small little virus which like was just nothing (laughs) it just kind of impacted the whole world so like everything shut down and nothing has been the same unfortunately ever since but uh we were able to we were able to kind of parlay that into into fundraising as well which i think ended up be like 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 four four grand i think total was what we raised for that uh sarah and catherine did the marathon for code breakers where sarah did a marathon down in dc catherine did hers over in london and we raised money for bluckley park for the bricks for the for the code breakers and stuff like that and this coming well actually next week uh we're doing the in-person fingers crossed, uh, the in-person uh, run walk thing at the Magnet Summit again. Uh, we, we will be in dinosaur costumes again. Like that's absolutely going to happen, but uh, hopefully we'll, <laughs> we'll raise some more money for charity. And this time it's for, uh, um, it's uh, for uh, I Play Like a Girl, which is actually based out of Nashville. And they are a, they are a uh, women and underrepresented uh, minority uh, organization which supports stem uh primarily primarily in school so like it's 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 a really awesome organization i know uh um i know that we donated to them in the past i know that jessica has actually worked closely with the ceo whose name currently escapes me and uh, all i can think of is amy and that's not right so (laughs) I, i know that i know that's not correct but yeah so you know we kind of parlayed into that but like it's just you know it's just a hashtag like like it can be anything that you want it to be like like we have a forum we have 
you know, uh, we have the annual challenge that's going on where, you know, you can have the, the distance all like automatically sync and stuff like that. And as long as you submit one activity a month, like you're automatically eligible for the random drawing, which you get like a, a, a shirt and a, a headband for like, you know, we just, it's, it's essentially like, you know, we're, we're, we work with computers at the end of the day. And when you work with computers all day long, like you tend to just kind of sit behind a desk and be, not, not move very much. So like, I just want to get up and active a little bit. Like, you know, if you want to be an awesome, uh, like Olympian power lifter, like that's fine. If, if you want to just, just go for like a 15 minute walk, like that's fine too. Like it's, it's, it, it can be, you know, that's one of the amazing things about it. Like, because it's not an actual program or anything like that, like, it can be whatever you want it to be. Like it can be the motivational factor. It can be just something, you know, if you do it for like, for like the, the pictures on Instagram, well, Twitter, I guess, but also Instagram, like if you just do it for the pictures, like that's fine too. Like it can be whatever you want it to be. I feel like you called me out a little bit. You're like, you only need to post once a month. <laughs> <laughs> I, like, I can't even do that. I, <laughs> I do the workouts, but I, I for, always forget to post or like log my mileage or um, whatever workout I'm doing that day. Always. Just, just get a smartwatch and just have the steps automatically sync. Just do that. <laughs> I, I need to do that. I think, yeah. I, but then, you know, we would have to figure out like how to, how to get the steps up without actually moving. You know, there's this competitive factor oh, that, here. That, that's, that's where <laughs> Google comes in. <laughs> that's where the Google searches come in. <laughs> oh my gosh. That's too funny. So how do people get involved with the uh, DFI fit movement? Uh, you, just, you know, just uh, so currently, I think we're most active on Twitter. I don't think there's much of a uh, of an Instagram thing really going yet, as as far as I know. But uh, you know, just just post you know a workout that you've done or like like a picture, a, a, a gym selfie, you know, whatever, like like pictures of weights, like what, whatever you want to do. Like or or if you just want to be like, hey, like I did, you know, I did. Uh, 20 air squats and took a walk for for 30 minutes a day like like that's fine too like it just you know again it could be there for accountability it can be there there not only for accountability for yourself but also for others like to keep you know like hey like like great job like you know keep it up stuff like that like you know it could be it could be a, a cheering section it can be like if you if you just want to do that every day like like and it just gets like part of your routine. Like it, it can be whatever you want. Like it's it's just like the, the forensic thing. Like you just have to start somewhere. Doesn't matter where, it doesn't matter what you do. Like, <laughs> like if, if you're active for five, if if you do 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 setups for five minutes, like cool, that counts. Like anything counts. Like it's just just get up and be active just a little bit more. Yeah. So for those of you that aren't uh, aware of what the movement is, uh, Brian and his team have created a spreadsheet of different activities that have different mileage associated to it. So if you do like an intense, I, I'm still trying to figure out the levels of intensity for yoga, the easy, moderate, or intense. So I just log intense for our <laughs> But um, they they equate to certain certain like distance for that. Mm -hmm. And then you can contribute to the map of across the US. Um, and I don't know, who's, who's the leaderboard right now? Who's leading that? Do well, we know? I think, uh, uh, well, it's, it's April, so we're what? Three, we're we're three months. Well, we're, we're, we're a, little, a little over three months in, which means that Adam Harrison probably won, if I remember correctly, like back in like the third week of January. So like he he's all about it. Like he is just he's just a freaking monster, especially with the bike distance. Like the the bike distance, like that that's the quickest way to pick up distance is do any biking and and for whatever reason he likes to do that for like multiple hours a day. So he's. Yeah, I, I don't. I don't think it was January. I think it might have been might have been the end of February. But he like he always gets done with it super super quickly. Even when this year is fifteen hundred miles, I think or so. Like it's it's a wow. fairly substantial distance, and yeah, he just crushes it. So, but yeah, yeah, like, I like the milestone tips and yeah. little fun facts about where you are. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah. Yeah, so that that was uh, over Christmas break. That's what we. That's what Catherine and I do. Like, we're so we're the ones who run the the virtual challenges, and like we just come up with like, hey, like like I need you know six waypoints or something like that, and she'll just go on the map and do it, and then be like, all right, like cool, like here's here's where Optimus Prime is. Like, okay, cool. I get that. That's that's a good one. So, yeah, we try to make it fun. interesting. You know, try to try to keep people engaged. And again, like it, th there is no wrong answer to it. Like it's as just being a little bit more active, like that's that's all that matters. Just move your body. 
Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I think it's really important. Like you were saying, we're sitting behind a computer all day, personal well-being and wellness. Um, I mean, I'm sure the answer is yes. And it's going to be a very obvious answer, but um, do you think it is really impactful in our professional lives too? Like, obviously we know personally it is, but professionally. Oh, absolutely. Like, I, I mean, you know, I mean, obviously there are numerous studies like, like thousands by this point of studies that show like, you know, the positive impacts that exercise has on not just like your physical well-being, but emotional well-being, everything like that too. And like, like, honestly, like I feel much better. I, I know personally, like I feel much better, like after I've got my workout in, like that's usually how I start my day is to, because I, I, I know this is going to be really weird, but like, I am not a coffee drinker at all. I despise coffee. I, 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 I hate coffee with a passion. Like I can't stand it. So like, but the start to my day is, is a workout, like, like is, you know, a jog and, and session with weights or, or if it's going to be like a, a bit of a run day, which I, unfortunately because of my knee surgeries and stuff, like I can't run outside. So I run on the Peloton, but like, it still works. But like, that is, that is what kind of jump starts my day. And, you know, and there's no, there's no wrong answer to like, when's the best time to work out or anything like that either. Like if, if, if you have an hour between lunch, you know, when you have can get something in, like by all means, like take that and do that. If if you can do it when when you get home from work, like that's fine too. Like it just it's all about just doing something. And it's it's it like I said, it's it's obviously there are the physical benefits of it, but like you can't ever underestimate just the, the amount of the benefits that you know the mental well being has into it. And and, and you've you obviously you're sore and especially if you haven't done anything for a while like you're really really sore and sometimes for a couple of days but like typically like you feel better pretty quickly yeah i feel like you get that immediate even if you're sore you get that immediate mental refresh yeah. clarity that you need um and like you were saying there's a lot of studies that only show that you only need 10 minutes of activity to get that type of boost mentally yeah. um I'm offended that you don't drink coffee. No, I'm just kidding. I'm a coffee connoisseur. Like I am the person who, when I travel, I try to find like different small coffee shops and like research the different types of roasts that they have and what's good. I'm, mm -hmm. I'm such a nerd when it comes to that stuff, but yeah. um, I, I, I'm tried. the one who drinks coffee in the gym. I'm like working out and instead of a water bottle, I have a nice coffee. <laughs> <laughs> Disgusting. I, I, I've tried, I continue to try, it's, it's like beer. Like I also, I don't drink beer. I hate the taste of beer. Like I will try it I, and I will continue to try it, but like, I still have not found one that I like. So I don't know. There's nothing wrong with that. <laughs> That's totally fine. So yeah, your gym that you have is, is a uh, home gym, right? Yeah. Was that a, was, I've seen pictures obviously because mm -hmm. of Twitter and stuff like that. Um, was that a COVID project? Did you have that before COVID hit? Yeah. So pretty expensive so, built out. Yeah. <laughs> so, so one of the things I always wanted to do was like, I always wanted my own home gym and I, I have wanted that for, I don't, I don't know, the last decade maybe. And I just never really got around to it. I, I got the, I got the Peloton bike. I got the Peloton treadmill and like, like those were awesome. And I was like, you know, like I really want just like an actual workout space. And then, I started, I started to research doing it. And then the pandemic started with, you know, with the actual like lockdowns and everything. And then there was the huge rush on all of the workout equipment because, you know, like I love going to a gym, but I also don't really like going to a gym because like people don't clean up after themselves before the pandemic. So I still don't know how well they're going to clean up after themselves when they're supposed to do it. So I was like, you know, like if I just have my own, like, I don't have to worry about that. Like, if I want to do curls in the squat rack, it's my squat rack. So that's okay. I can do whatever I want to do. It's fine. So just kind of worked on building it like sort of piece by piece as, as like something would come in stock or come new to be available, like just work through it. And then, you know, eventually added, uh, you know, added like different machines and different attachments and everything. So like I have a pretty, pretty functional, well, I, I think I have a very functional gym and like, it's awesome because I can just roll downstairs. Like, I don't really have an excuse. It's like, oh, like, I don't want to go out to the car and then drive for 20 minutes. It's like, I literally just have to walk into the other room. It's like, okay, I'm in the gym. <laughs> yeah, that makes it super convenient to stay yeah. on track and routine. So yeah. you have a you have a Peloton treadmill, Peloton mm -hmm. bike. Do you have the mirror too? The what? The mirror. Oh no, no, no. I, I, I like, I like my free weights. <laughs> I like, I like my actual barbells and dumbbells. I, I don't. I don't know. I, I've we, we tried. Was it tonal? Uh, we we tried tonal, and yeah, not a fan of that. Not not a fan of the tonal thing, and and because of the mirror, like I don't think that's either. And 
Peloton just came out with some like Xbox Connect contraption thing, which is called the, I, I don't remember what, what they call that, but like, like, no, like I, I feel pretty comfortable with the workouts that I'm doing. Like I, again, like if somebody sees that and like, that is the motivation for them, but I would say by all means, like get it. And, and, you know, and, and if somebody thinks like the mirror is like, like a convenient way for them to like, by all means, but that's just not the thing for me. Yeah, I think the mirror is beneficial too. Like if you're not familiar with weight training or anything mm -hmm. like that, like learning the movements and the form correct so you don't hurt yourself yeah. <laughs> is yeah. really important. Yeah. Um, I can't stress that enough. So <laughs> that. And then uh, the hashtag uh, DFIR Dino Squad, is that the T-Rex suit that you're talking about? Yeah. Is that where that came yeah. from? So, yeah, so that started... I that, that started in Nashville in 2019. And if I remember right um uh lit moose got gifted a dinosaur costume like one of the inflatable dinosaur costumes at what at i think one of the uh the in nccdc or something like that and I, I told her like if she brings that to nashville like i will get one and bring it to nashville like we will we will just walk around in dinosaur costumes and of course she's like sure i'll do that so i was like well i have to do this now too so yeah, so we uh, uh, we decided to do the run walk thing, and we didn't tell anybody that we actually had it. And we went to get in the elevator, and the one elevator was broken, so like we actually didn't get downstairs until like after everybody left. So we just kind of like walked around like little bits of Nashville, waiting for people to come back, and like people like ran across the street to take pictures with us. And some random security guard came up. He's like, "It's like yeah, like I had reports of dinosaurs out here," and it's like, "And they weren't lying." I'm like, no, <laughs> we're actually out here. <laughs> So yeah, that's that's where that came from. And then of course, yo, like it's like everything else. Like once we find something that's like funny and just sticks with it, like that just kind of is the repeating thing. So like fortunately we get to bring it back in, in person next week. So I, I'm super excited for that. Oh my gosh. Yeah, you'll just have to run with it now. Yep. <laughs> so do you do you work out in that? uh as well <laughs> uh, i have i i i uh, well i haven't fully done workouts i've done workout videos so like for for like the the magnet summit challenge two years ago i think it was where I had a I was doing like bench presses i had a lightsaber on the bike i was doing that uh i, I had the grabby arm so i was unstoppable <laughs> oh my god yep that's too funny <laughs> well at least you at least you carry the theme all the way through yep <laughs> Um, so part of this podcast, what we like to do is an expert to react and my co-host Jared is not with me today. Um, but I wanted to just end it and pick something that I thought was, uh, fitting for what we were talking about. Can you hear it? Yep. Hey, ready for lunch? Oh, one sec. Is that the prototype drive system for the High G Rover? No, Bernadette got me a Fitbit so she can track how much I'm exercising. <laughs> That'll teach her to care about your health. <laughs> yeah, I can't wait to see the look on her face when I die young. <laughs> when was the last actual exercise you got? Well, the other day when she tried to put that Fitbit on me and I ran away from her. <laughs> According to a recent study, simply thinking about exercise, even while sitting still, can have physical benefits. For all you know, I could be exercising right now. Are you? Nah, I'll do it tomorrow. <laughs> Wouldn't be the worst thing if we were more active. You make an excellent point. <laughs> Ooh, I think I'm getting a runner's high. Howie? What's up? Why does your Fitbit say you ran 174 miles yesterday? <laughs> oh my gosh. Do you watch The Big Bang Theory? Yes, yep. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, so yeah, that's, that's, uh, that's exactly that's how possible. I exercise. I just think about it and then I feel the benefit. <laughs> as long as you don't put it off till tomorrow, that's fine. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So I always mm. find it so funny when people try to like hack like the steps or whatever and fit mm. it. I'm like, is that yeah. actually accurate? I feel like now the devices have come such a long way where they're like yep. tracking not only your steps, but your heartbeat and other like weird movements. So I guess how accurate is that? Have we yeah. have you ever looked into that? Well, so so not only have I looked into it, I, I do do that. So so I am a, I am a huge Pokemon Go player. I, I love Pokemon Go, <laughs> except I hate all of the changes that they've made, like in the past I don't know, like two years, I guess. Actually, probably probably the pandemic changes. 
So I actually bought uh, bought a, a, a foam rocker that you put your phone in and it just rocks it back and forth on a regular basis. So that way it actually, because again, it's, it's not the Fitbit, it's the phone itself because it has the internal gerometer. And because of that, like it actually records it as steps. So like I get a ton of steps. I don't actually like upload them there or anything, but like for the game, like it counts as like I walked a ton of miles. So like, yeah. I absolutely do that. Whoever is tracking your activity in the game is like, wow, this man. Yeah. <laughs> this yeah, man is getting it. Yeah. Like, wow, 240 kilometers this week. Like, yep, sure did. <laughs> yeah, I have an Apple Watch and I'm terrible. I clearly don't have it on because I always forget to put it on. Um, but it always, I always feel so agitated when it goes off and it's like time to stand up, time to yeah. go for a quick walk. I'm like, I don't need you controlling my life. <laughs> like, I'll think about it, but yeah. oh my gosh. All right. Well, thank you so much for joining us on this podcast. It was really insightful on um, the information. We'll be sure to post all the resources that you talked about um, throughout the show at the end um, so that anybody listening can, you know, look up any of the scripts you've done or the blogs and look into the, some of your consulting services. Um, really quickly, can you just tell us uh, what your business is called and where they can find you? Oh, yeah. Uh, so so my business is myself. It's, it's Brymore Labs. And uh, you can find me on, on Twitter or you know, go to brymorelabs.com. Uh, I have the I have a bunch of tools up there. Uh, you can also just search for, for me on GitHub as well. That's a, where I put some of the scripts and stuff like that. So, yeah, just a... Uh, yeah, feel free to reach out to me and you know I, again I, I can't guarantee that i'll immediately get back but as soon as i have time i promise that i will all right awesome we'll be sure to post all that stuff um as for everybody listening thank you again for tuning in to unallocated space by our point forensics and if you enjoyed the video please give us a thumbs up thanks guys <laughs>